It's time now for the Sports Objective Podcast. No talking heads, just guys who love sports. Here's Dave Richmond. Welcome into the Sports Objective, and it's uh, summertime now, almost uh, here in a couple weeks. But right now, it feels like summertime, and with us right now, Bubba Rosenbaum. What's up, dude? Yeah, um, Dave, it's funny you say it feels like summertime around here in the, the western part of the state. I'm about 30 minutes north of Charlotte in these last few days, um, especially yesterday. Uh, but mm, I think going forward these next two or three days, the highs are only supposed to be in the upper 70s. It's, it's kind of feeling like fall. Uh, so it's, it's, getting, me, it's getting, getting me excited for uh, football season. Oh, there's no doubt about it. We've got a very special show, folks. Uh, Kyle from the Grange Show. Uh, is working, so he uh, he's working today, so we're trying to uh, get this podcast out, so we love Kyle, so I know people always question, why is Kyle not on the podcast? Well, sometimes he is, and sometimes uh, we all have, all three of us have uh, different lives and schedules, and sometimes it's like herding cats, so um, anyway, Bubba, I just wanted to start out, do a little bit of a, a round table, a few things to talk about. First on the list is certainly... Uh, something we've talked about is uh, Coach Godwin and would he stay? So I know that he made it a, uh, remarks about that. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, Steve and I go from HorseToColors.net. i um, got to give credit to him. Uh, he's all over it. Uh, he put that or this out there earlier this morning. Um, he got some comments from Coach Godwin. Obviously, the five seasons he's been at ECU, he's won three conference championships, uh, two American tournament titles. Um, this year won the regular season. Um, right. four, four NCAA bursts and then back to back regionals hosted at Clark Claire Stadium and a pair of super regionals, uh, in 2016 and then also this year. So just and he's remark- been coach of the year for the American twice. Yep. Um, coach of the year and the American twice. And, and we could go on with what he's done um, with this baseball program, not only on the field, but off the field in terms of community service and then the job they've done in the classroom, which has just been remarkable. And I don't think, uh, like some of our guests who have been baseball players at ECU in the past have mentioned just how impressive that is because of all the moving parts and how much time these and guys no miss in, ter- in terms of class. Um, and, and they're having to do these things um, away from away from class um, and, and away from campus. So it's it's very remarkable the uh, GPA that was pushing three five. Yeah, I, I feel like that uh, he's done a great job, and there's no question about it. And we'll we'll feel um, very very good about our chances and where this program is. No discipline problems, no off the field distractions, any of that kind of mess. Um, and that's another thing to be proud of is that these are really good quality kids. The, the term sometimes is used loosely, but the, the term student athlete is uh, definitely apparent with the baseball program. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And I'm kind of getting to some of those comments um, that Coach Godwin um, gave Stephen Igo um, when asked about the topic of other schools and programs around the nation being interested. Of course, um, when you're as successful as – as we have been, the, the, uh, those uh, accolades and accomplishments that we just mentioned, uh, you're, you're going to get interest, and, and that's a good thing because of, because of all the success yeah. we've had. In uh, 2016, Alabama came calling. In, um, in 2018, Mississippi State, one of the premier programs in the country, and you know, you going, 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 going back to Omaha for a second straight year, they came calling. And so, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, there was a rumor, I don't even know if it's true, that Georgia Tech may have some interest a year or two ago, but uh, uh, maybe last year. But I don't. I don't know if there was any. I didn't. Uh, the Mississippi actually, State was one. Prior to you uh, bringing that up uh, on maybe it was extra innings. I know you brought that up on a recent show, uh, but I actually had not heard that. But it, it would not surprise me if that would have been the case because I know prior to this year um, that. Danny Hall, who's done a tremendous job there for a long, long time, and they had struggled. So I could have seen uh, some some rumors swirling about them being interested in Cliff for sure. But um, his comments, as Stephen Igo, when asked about the topic, he said, I've not been contacted by anybody, and I'd like to think people have a little bit of trust in me. And I've been pursued a couple of times since I've been here, and I've been here for five years. I haven't wavered from that decision, and this place means a lot to me. We're working our tails off every single day to just be better, and we're in a great place right now with our program. Uh, He went on to say, like I told our kids when we got back on Sunday, 
and some of our fans don't understand what these kids put into our program and what our coaching staff does every single day to help our program. But when you have goals that are as high as ours to win a national championship, you make yourself vulnerable. When you don't win a national championship, it feels like you've been hit by a car and your insides have been ripped out. We shot for the moon and hit the stars. We're undisputedly one of the top 16 teams in the country. And no offense to any other programs that play at ECU, but I think every program would like to be where we are. It's taken a lot of hard work. I've been able to reflect on it. I'm just super proud to be the head coach at East Carolina, a place that I played that I get to see so many familiar faces. My teammates get to come back and watch us play, and we're just going to keep making this place better. So some pretty strong comments there, uh, very encouraging comments. If you're Pirate Nation, and um, that's one thing you know you're going to get, um, you, you know you're going to hear Coach Godwin be up front with you, and, and he's going to be um, shooting straight from the hip. He's not going to beat around the bush. And it's great because, you know, this program, like I said, Bubba, on um, on our podcast, and um, we mentioned this too, uh, we were actually on a, a show that we'll uh, put out the link. I want to mention that at Roundtable, and we uh, recorded it last night. And you want to tell the folks about the, the great guy. We've got our, our new friend now, uh, Jeff Allen. Yeah, well, so since we uh, had the opportunity to be on Jeff Allen's show, he hosts a, a couple of different podcasts. Uh, he's a UCF fan, and he's so he's located down there in Orlando, I believe it is. If not, he's very close to Orlando. Um, he has a podcast yep. called the AAC Report, which I believe our our content will be published on um, later on this evening. So we'll put that out on our social media. And so, so keep an eye out for that. Um, an excellent chat about the big three, um, particularly baseball, since that just wrapped up. But then we also talked a little football. Uh, we actually did not – I was mistaken. We did not have a chance to talk about men's basketball, but he seemed um, – or it seemed very likely that he'll have us on down the road, and we will talk about Joe Dooley and the men's basketball program. But um, So stay yeah. tuned for that. And then also uh, something else on, on this show – and we had the opportunity to catch up with a longtime pirate, a guy that's coached track at ECU, both on the, the women's and the men's side of things, uh, working with the sprinters and hurdlers, a guy named Udon Cheek. Uh, Udon ran track for ECU. He came into the pirate program as a walk-on back in the late 80s and was a pirate from 87 to 91 and ended up earning – um, a large portion of a scholarship, I think he said initially about a half scholarship and got up to about 75% of a scholarship. So tremendous conversation with you, Don Cheek. You know, Dave, a lot of times you hear that expression, uh, people talking about how they bleed purple and gold or bleed purple and sweat gold. Well, you, Don Cheek, certainly fits into that category, as many Pirate fans do. And back in 2007, during the heart of the uh, Skip Holtz era, he sang – uh, a song called Purple and Gold, and a lot of people know it as My Heart is Purple and Gold, and a lot of East Carolina football videos, et cetera, have been set to that. So um, we'll enjoy chatting with him about that about that song and then also another pirate theme song that he has out there called What Kind of Pirate Are You? and has some very strong lyrics and clean but strong and, and send a, a very strong message. And it's something that I really believe that uh, East Carolina fans – I need to take the heart and uh, put into practice. No question about it. There's uh, we've had a lot. Of, we've had a few lean and tough years, but the uh, the future is bright. And uh, very happy with the coaches staff we have. And the reason I brought up Jeff Allen was a simple fact that uh, the very fact that we were being on his show. But I mentioned last night um, several different points. But when you look at Coach God, when he's a tremendous asset to our community. Um, you know, Bubba, uh, one of the things that the term that you is maybe overused, but checking the boxes, he's from Eastern North Carolina. He went to East Carolina um, being a player. He had the coaching experience around the nation, some of the best. He comes back to his alma mater, and you look at uh, the accomplishments. I, I That's the thing that's mind-boggling as you think about it feels like that Coach Godwin's been here a long time, but Bubba, what is it, five seasons? I mean, it hasn't been as long, but it's because of all the accomplishments that one coach and his wonderful coaching staff has had. And I, I would just say this, um, sometimes 
and he, I know that he's a coach, and there's the highs and lows and all that, and you get all the praise, but you get all the criticism. But at the same time, um, we need to channel our anger and the things, our disappointments. And by, you know, when he's talking about getting better, well, the Pirate fans, we can get better too. We can, um, there's people that are not giving money as far as the Pirate Club. There's people that are um, not buying season tickets. Uh, we can go to the baseball banquet. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that we can improve. I'm not being negative towards our fan base. I'm saying we can get better as a fan base and support Cliff and his staff and whatever they want, let's raise the money for it. We'll step up and we'll uh, we'll raise the money for, and we'll um, we'll give the money for, to it, and then that's how the you build the program is by supporting the coach, and we can talk about how great we are, and as far as purple and gold and bleeding purple and gold, but unless we put the money behind uh, behind it, then it doesn't mean as much. That's just my I'll, I'll get off my soapbox now. Yeah, and as we've said a lot of times, and there's strength in numbers, and obviously I mean, you've had folks like Walter Williams and um, a host of others whose whose pitchers are on Clark Leclair Stadium who uh, made that yeah. stadium possible way back in. Um, obviously, the stadium opened in the in the winter or, or early spring of 2005 when we hosted Michigan and um, the Keith Leclair Classic. But um, the planning for that ballpark, I'm sure, like 03, 04, um, through there, after yeah. we had that tremendous run under Coach LeClaire. Um, but, but yeah, we've had a lot of very generous individuals uh, step up and donate. Um, but we certainly need to increase our numbers. Uh, there's no doubt. And, um, and that's something hopefully we'll do. Um, I know one of the things that's really huge for the baseball program is their preseason banquet that they have and they had it at the new ECU student yeah. center this year after having had it at Menji's and then also Harvey Hall in recent years and uh, we need to make it to the point I want to say that there was something like five six hundred people in attendance yeah. it was I know my parents were, were two of those in attendance and uh, also several other family friends and they said it was just such a well-run event and, and that's something I would definitely encourage you to um to keep in mind for early February of 2020 and you know, make plans to go to that, especially um, if, I mean, if you're a diehard baseball supporter or um, if you're someone that has young kids that, that enjoy being around the program, you have the opportunity to sit with the player and um, get to know that player on a personal level and also get a chat with some of the other players, um, get things autographed, what have you. Yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't it be nice, and I know that we want to have it on campus, and Cliff may get mad for me to say this, but uh, how, how great and good a problem would it be that there's so much demand that you could sell two or 3,000 seats, so, like having to move it to the Greenville Convention Center um, at $60, $75 a piece. Uh, that's the kind of – I think that there's honestly, I think there's enough um, demand um, that we could do something like that. But, again, it's going to take – not only those of us, and I'm including myself in this, running our mouths, oh, yes, we're great, we're East Carolina, blah, 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 blah. It's putting your money where your mouth is, and uh, that would be, to me, I love the university, so anything that we can have at the university, um, but I think it's going to get to the point, it, it's going to get to the point where East Carolina is going to have to move that. I really believe that, I don't know what the capacity is that uh, they're at the new um student center but i would imagine that a few thousand would be difficult to get in there i don't know yeah i would think so um i wasn't there for this year's event unfortunately just conflicts with family stuff going on with, yeah, with riley too. riley's basketball but um i know my parents said it was a pretty full room and so yeah i don't i don't think it could grow much larger than what it what it was this year maybe maybe a little but but not to the thousands for sure um but but that's one of those things you certainly want to grow it but at the same time i would like to um i have no idea i don't know how how big they'd want to get it just um, obviously they want to make as much money as they can but at the same time they want to keep it somewhat intimate in terms of right. um in terms of having a player to be at every table and or m at least most tables and that kind of thing so it would be interesting to see um, how large it gets in the coming years if we keep having the success we're having, which I fully expect we will. Oh, yeah, and I'm not saying, and I want to make it clear, I'm not saying that it's not successful now. I'm just saying that there's a lot of baseball fans out there. There's a lot of interest. There are people that I know people right now 
um, that Bubba, they're not baseball fans per se, but they love Cliff Godwin and they love the university to the point of where they're following the program extremely close. And they said, I can't believe, I had a couple people tell me, they said, I really like Coach Godwin. I love the way he runs the program. I'm not really a baseball fan, um, but they're like, but they love the fact that the university has a sport like baseball that's winning big time. So um, when you put a winning, you know, Coach Dewey talks about that, and certainly Coach Houston, you put a winning product on the field or the court, uh, the people that are not even fans really of the sport will follow it because it's East Carolina, and and two, they're winning. Right, and and I I truly believe Coach Godwin when he says that about the comment that he made is certainly not a shot that Mike Houston or Joe Dooley or Courtney Oliver or anyone else uh, that we have on our coaching staff within our athletic department, but I mean it's, it's just a fact because obviously Coach Dooley would like to be uh, in the running for NCAA tournaments year in year out. Oh yeah, I mean. Because we we haven't been there in nearly three decades, but but uh, and I and I really think that uh, we're we're going to get there uh, where we're a competitive product and, and a consistent winner year in year out, uh, vying for some sort of postseason play. But um, yeah, we've got a situation go- now where um, Bubba, um, I heard this I think when maybe when Dooley was hired, um, and I can't remember who said it, but I will just say it again. Uh, I I was. I read it somewhere, it may have been on Hoist of Colors, but four to five years for Dooley is what we need to give considering how bad the program had gotten. Um, you know, with uh, I think Lebo, um, I think he was burnt out as a coach the last couple of years. Um, then you have Michael Perry basically for that lap when he resigned on November 29th. Uh, I guess it was 2017, something like that. And yeah, 2017. And so you have, like, from that point forward, uh, you have Coach Julie who's having to really uh, re- uh, revamp the program, rebuild it. So basically, it's like starting uh, the culture. You're starting from scratch. If you're building a house, uh, you had to knock everything, tear everything down, and start building the foundation now with the new players. By the way, folks, uh, Bubba, um, I think I texted you this, but I'm hearing rumors of uh, next week, if it's true, we'll be there until uh, uh, I was going to say July, June 20th. They're going to have a press conference to announce all the players, give a chance for people to learn the new players and everything. Uh, I think if that's the case, that's a tr- that's a great move. And if that's the case, we'll uh, definitely be there. So um, I don't know what time of day, uh, but we'll be there and we'll make it happen uh, for sure. So I want to let folks know um, that if they do do that, then we'll um, we'll cover it and uh, let everybody hear. I guess we could do a whole podcast on that, right? <laughs> just oh yeah, um, we did a whole podcast with Cy Seymour here a few weeks back. Yeah. Uh, pr- prior to the addition of Charles Coleman um, to the group, but um, but yeah, it's easy to consume an hour when when you have the roster turnover that that our men's basketball program is having, uh, and uh, uh, I guess what eleven new pieces, and and so at the very most we'll have two guys returning, probably um, Jaden Gardner, and then. And then uh, perhaps Sean Williams and uh, and perhaps Seth Leday. But the more I saw the some of the pieces we we're adding, the more I'm wondering whether um, I think Seth Leday was in a position to potentially graduate. So um, and obviously he's coming off an ACL injury. So yeah, I'm I don't not know. Sure. I, I'm not not sure uh, whether Seth will be part of the program next year, at least in a playing capacity or not. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, by the way, let's. Uh... Let's talk, uh, Bubba. I know that you have a handful of players. Uh, let's talk about football. Um, you know how much I love basketball. But let's talk football now. I know there's a number of recruits um, that people we've been recruiting, but now we have for your 2020 um, class. We already have six commitments. Do you want to spend uh, a few minutes talking about that? And uh, I'll let you do that since you know more about it. And then on the other side, I'll I'll, um, I'll chime in. But I, I think it'll be good for pirate nation and for the the uh, listeners of the podcast to get a feel start learning the names it's kind of hard but let's start learning the names of uh, future pirates yeah as you said we have six commitments for the class of 2020 um there are uh, the most recent commitment i should say is isaiah foot he committed yesterday i believe it was uh, he's an offensive lineman he's uh, currently playing uh or in his junior season played right tackle uh, he played also a little bit at left tackle and uh, also lined up some at 
um, in the tight end position, basically as a blocking tight end or a tackle over situation. But uh, watching his film, he, he moves very well to be 6'4", 285, um, very athletic. Uh, he got down the field um, moving moving defensive linemen or blocking linebackers, um, getting down the field, blocking on screen passes, very impressed with his athleticism. And, again, he's 6'4", 285 pounds, and, um, and uh, I'm not – Positive on this, but according to 24-7 Sports, I believe he's projecting to be more of a guard in college than a tackle. Uh, but um, he played at Calvert or plays, uh, excuse me, at Calvert High School in Frederick, Maryland, and um, he he had offers from the likes of Temple, Marshall, Buffalo, Kent State, and UMass. And he's one of three offensive linemen in this class. And another offensive lineman is Walt Stribling. He's from Virginia, 6'6", 310 pounds. And then you also have Jaque- excuse me, Jaquez Powell out of Southwest Edgecombe uh, in, uh, in Pine Tops, and 6'4", 305 pounds. So, and then you uh, on the other side of the ball in the trenches, you have Javion McCray from West Brunswick down in Shalote. 6'1", 285 pounds. Uh, you have on the defensive side of the ball, uh, inside linebacker Dwayne Martin from Lawrence, South Carolina. And then up in New Jersey, uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's pronounced Irv- Irvington. Um, from Irvington High School, you had Nazir Clark. Um, he's a 6'2", 168-pound cornerback. So you, you take a look at it, and two guys from North Carolina, one from South Carolina, one from Virginia, one from Maryland, and one from New Jersey. So pretty spread out, uh, just like Coach Houston has said, and we'll start close to home and then branch up and down the, the eastern seaboard, the, the mid-Atlantic region. And that has certainly been the case thus far with our six commitments. Um, three of them, like I said, are on the offensive line, one defensive lineman, one inside linebacker, and one defensive back in Nazir Clark. So um, you look at it, and um, the defensive and offensive lines are a place where we've really um, lacked production and lacked depth here in the the recent years. And with that being the case, uh, a lot of attention is being put on those areas by uh, Coach Houston and Steve Shankweiler and this coaching staff. So, Dave, that's a look at the 2020 ECU football commitments thus far. Uh, That's where things stand right now, and we'll continue to keep Pirate Nation posted on that as um, Steve and I go provides us with updates on hoistacolors.net. All right, sounds good. Appreciate uh, Coach uh, Houston and his staff for all they're doing, their hard work. And uh, thanks to Igo, too, for uh, folks, hoistacolors.net. Lots of great things, lots of great content. If you're a Pirate fan, uh, you definitely need to do yourself a favor and become a member of Hoist the Colors. That's where everybody's at. All right, Bubba, I know that I'm very excited about our guest now. Do you want to introduce him? Yeah, let's catch up with Udon Cheek, ECU men's track and field coach since 2008. And he had also spent time on um, Coach Chu Justice staff back in the mid-'90s. And let's go to an interview with Udon right now. And so- Come on, let's get it. Cause I paid to see if I can change the scene and make people. 
people shout together Cause I play the game and I know when times get hard we need each other So I wait and see how good we can be and jump in when it's convenient Don't be ashamed to just do your thing cause one thing can make a difference So paint your face, keep your band raised to stay true to the pirate nation We're on our way, let's go yeah. jump out, just hit yeah. our second guess yeah. My heart is purple and gold, I'm a pirate down to my soul And I don't back down loud at all, find out when the cannons explode From the sidelines down to the post, put it down like not even close All out to the last whistle blow, for the flag is sold and for bones If you're looking for me, here I am, that's who I'm the number one pirate fan I'm the one with the purple hat and the purple shirt with the purple pants If you're looking for me, here I am, guess who I'm the number one pirate fan I'm the one with the tailgate down and the purple truck with the pirate flag I'm the one with the purple wig that sits by the girl with the purple lips I'm the one who dresses the kids up in whatever purple fits I'm purple and not ashamed, I'm purple inside my veins I'm purple yeah. down to the bone, yeah. I'm a pirate yeah. so now yeah, you yeah. know My heart is purple and gold, I'm a pirate Yes, very happy uh, from the track and build coaches, right? Yeah, yeah, very excited to have Coach Udon Cheek with us. Coach, welcome into the show. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Um, Pirate Nation is probably, um, even if they don't know you, they they know of you because of the song, uh, Your Heart is Purple, and, or excuse me, My Heart is Purple and Gold, or I think the title may actually just be Purple and Gold, but... Um, uh, an awesome song that you you wrote and produced back in I guess 2007 thereabouts. So let's talk a little bit about that, and then we'll talk about your association with East Carolina. Okay. Well, uh, I wrote the song just out of uh, just uh, just a lot of excitement that Skip had brought back to the program. Uh, not to throw any shade at uh, what was happening prior to his arrival. Oh, but, that was uh, pretty awful. Yeah, I remember being in the stands uh, watching, I think it was Redmond from uh, Louisville, and he just shredded us. And uh, I can't lie, man, I left the game a little early. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think I had uh, been to a game for, for a while um, after that. And uh, then uh, Skip kind of righted the ship. And I don't know, man, one day I was at work, and I was uh, – I guess as the kids say, lit up uh, two Mountain Dews, and next thing I know, uh, I had a song there. So uh, I, it was funny. I sent it uh, to Skip's secretary um, to just, you know, let him know I was excited about the program. It was kind of like a goodwill gesture. And I'm thinking, you know what, this song is pretty hot. I'm going to do something with it. But unfortunately, uh, it got shared so many times that people had it before I could do uh, you got anything pirated. significant with it. I got pirated, man, no doubt. So, uh, hey, that's what we do, man. So, <laughs> Yeah, I remember back in the day, uh, I did the same thing. I, I apologize. I remember I had it as my, uh, remember I'm back on MySpace where you could put songs as your background. Exactly. I, I had yeah. it as my song up there with a little ECU video I'd made to it. And, 
Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be a, a good opportunity for something like a ringtone or something like that. But uh, um, at the same time, I did it out of excitement. I, I'm a different kind of I'm a different kind of coach, man. Um, I very much so love the experience, love being a part of the uh, the experience of the student athletes. So I really did it just to serve as just some locker room encouragement or something. So I, I really did it out of a heart and a passion for the kids. So even though it didn't quite do what I thought it would have done, uh, where I wrote it from, it did exactly what it needed to do, man. And that's just keep things stirred up around here. Uh, Y'all know, man, when football's going well, everything's going well. So yeah. ev- every little bit helps, man. We all need to be loud, proud, and crazy because there are guys. And you know, uh, I, go ahead, Kyle. Well, I was going to say, you know, I know it's been played at football games over the years, but I'm kind of surprised, you know, to this day it's not played at every football game. I personally would rather have that than all we do is win at the end of games. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, all we do is win is so generic and played out. And in all honesty, man, I love this place to a fault. I've had opportunities to uh, coach at other places, but, I mean, this is me, man. I've been here since 87. I'm not going anywhere. Unless they tell me to go somewhere. Right. You know, this is this is where I am. I am truly a pirate. Uh, live, eat, sleep, die. You know, this this is this is who I am. You, and you, yeah. Don, um, that, that's something I was going to bring up a moment ago, but I didn't want to interrupt Kyle's question. Um, talk about your path to ECU back in 1987 uh, to Coach Carson's track program. I believe you're from the state of Virginia. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Inter- so talk inter- talk about talk about how you got to ECU. Interesting story. Uh, A lot of uh, people end up in track and field when their delusions of grandeur of being a football player don't uh, fall into place. But I thought that I was going to be, you know, pretty good wide receiver, kick returner type at a D1 level. But, uh, man, I had a a weird path in high school. I tore my Achilles tendon. I broke my back and I broke my clavicle all within uh, the four years that I was at uh, in high school. So track ended up being something that I was very good at. I only ran fast enough to win, uh, but I never really, you know, floored it. All of a sudden, football's not going my way. So, uh, you know, I'm going to lean on track. Well, all of a sudden, I find out my times aren't fast enough. So uh, I talked to uh, uh, Coach Bill Carson. Uh, We just went down on an unofficial visit. He says, hey, you win all the time, but your times are slow. But if you, uh, um, you know, place at your state championship, you know, I'll give you a scholarship. Well, I'm in literally in second place at the state championship, 1987 of uh, Virginia uh, state championships in track and field. I fall down while I'm in second place. So, uh, man, you talk about just, you know, torn. But uh, nonetheless, uh, he was the only D1 school that was going to give me a shot. I had opportunities at uh, some smaller institutions, but I wanted to go up against the best of the best. So I walked on to ECU. Um, and uh, I earned a 50% scholarship after one year and then a 75% scholarship after the second year, and then I never got much more than that because that's about, you know, what my worth was to the team. But uh, I was a uh, I was an intermediate hurdler and a four-by-four four leg. So uh, Coach Carson took me literally from 51 seconds to 46.8 in the 400. Uh, he's a legend, man. I love him dearly. I uh, miss him to this day. But uh, the opportunity to kind of serve in the stead of being the steward over the sprints and the hurdles uh, after him, it's just a great honor. What part of Virginia did you grow up in? Are you a Tidewater boy or another part? Oh, no, I'm I'm Northern Virginia, which is why I'm stating that I I ran fast enough to win. Back then, uh, track and field, uh, athletics just nowhere near what uh, Tidewater uh, uh, is now or was then. Uh, but uh, Northern Virginia wasn't as competitive uh, then, and uh, I just ran fast enough to win. And in all honesty, I went down to the Tidewater area for um, state championships, and I was probably going to win because when I fell down in second place, my first collegiate race, um, I actually got a chance to race the state champion um, that beat me when I fell down. I beat him by 20 meters. So oh, wow. I always had it in me. It's just that uh, I didn't know any better. I just I, I ran fast enough to win, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm incredible, but, you know, where I was from, I was pretty good. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, 
So um, you, you referenced Bill Carson. That's what anybody that knows anything about East Carolina track and field uh, prior to the last seven years or so, and really even then, because um, I can't imagine them, you know, Bill Carson Invitational, obviously. So um, with Coach Carson, he was the leader of the ECU track and field program for 40 years, from 1967 to 2007, and then he passed away, as you referenced, uh, back in July of 2012. Um, it's, it's a shame we didn't have the podcast back then because I would have loved to have had Coach Carson on. I remember my dad and I talking to him uh, when we went to uh, – uh, preseason football scrimmage and I remember coach Carson was very friendly and, uh, and just uh, he told us a lot about his athletes I can imagine the stories he would have had to talk to tell excuse me yeah uh he was uh again uh well he's one of a kind there's nobody like him he says exactly what he means he means exactly what he says he doesn't mind stepping on toes but I found out later that a lot of that was he knew how to push our buttons so a lot of times he would say things that, in hindsight, it, you know, just very unappreciated and, you know, it, it would come out of, it would seem totally unwarranted. But at the end of the day, what he did was he knew how to push the buttons of his athletes and, uh, you know, just make us rise to the occasion. But I tell you what, two weeks before he passed away, he came into the office. And I'm telling you, as an athlete, he never said he was proud of me, not once. But he came into the office two weeks before he passed away. And he said, Udon, I'm proud of you. And it just meant the world to me. And uh, he said, you know, he's proud of, you know, what we had done with the uh, with the sprint program uh, since my arrival, and uh, uh, especially on the women's side. But uh, he just commended me for the job that I was doing with them. And he even, uh, after all those years that it went by, he uh, congratulated me and said he was proud of my, my development under him as a, uh, as a uh, student athlete. So it just meant the world to me. You know, then I didn't know that was going to be my last conversation with him. But you got to understand, I always, I was running for his approval, and I never got it. He never said much more to me than too fast, too slow, right there, or saying something derogatory that would just really get my goat. And uh, that's, I, he knew that that's what was going to get me. When you tell me I can't do something, oh, man, it just burns burns my butt. So, um, you know, that's that's where, that's that's where my uh, improvement came from. He knew how to just, you know, he knew that if he told me I couldn't do something, and he said it all the time, but I'd end up doing it. Now, I wanted to ask you, um, looking at Coach Carson's bio, that's what, talk about his, um, he, he may have told you guys this, um, or maybe not, but uh, I know he went to West Virginia, and he actually had a degree in forestry, and he spent the first two years out of college out in Oregon with the U.S. Forestry uh, Service. Or, but, uh, but then he decided to, to take a different career path. He was the head track and field coach at Furman, and then he went and got his master's down at down in uh, Florida at, at U of F with the Gators, and then, and then he was a high school coach for a year or two, and then he came to ECU. So um, could you shed any light there? Uh, what I do know is I heard a bit of a story where uh, when he got his interview here, he totally uh, undercut the other person, I believe, that was supposed to interview for the job, whereas he took it for far less. Um, I, I don't remember exactly uh, what his path was uh, to ECU, but I do know that upon my arrival it didn't take long uh, to to see that it it was his baby, he was running it the way that he wanted to, and uh, you know that that type of person that he was that attracted you as a young man, uh, because he was just so opinionated, he was so sure of who he was, and when he spoke, um, it, it didn't take much for him to stir you up because he just he wasn't afraid of anything, nobody, like not at all. So I don't know if that exactly answers your question, but again, I don't know his path directly to here. I just know that um, uh, he wanted it bad enough to take it at a at a lower entry level of pay um, because this is what he wanted to do. And then once he made his mind up that that's what he was going to do, uh, I can look at my wall. I've got all this All American plaques on my office uh, wall, and it is just phenomenal. I I can't even take them down. Uh, it's hard for me to find space for the plaques we're getting now. But I love him so much, I just don't want to take him down off the wall. So I've got a few things down on the floor in my office. So uh, Coach Carson a, a uh, was a li living legend and now a legend.
after your time as an athlete at ECU came to an end, that's what um, Charles and Charlie and Chu Justice and a guy that had been a manager for ECU football back in the early and mid eighties. Um, we had him on the podcast last summer at Professor O'Cools and uh, talk talk about the opportunity he extended you to get into coaching. Well, it was awesome, uh, Coach. Uh... Coach Carson told me that, uh, you know, I had the it factor um, in, in coaching, the, but the person that gave me the opportunity to show that was Chu. What had happened was we were uh, – I had the opportunity just to kind of drive the van just to make some extra money so that, uh, you know, because we used to burn the midnight oil and, um, you know, we take uh, two or three vans to different locations. But on those trips, uh, you know, we talk about track and field quite a bit, Chu and I. And he said, hey, you know what? You know more about the sprints and hurdles than I do. He says, why don't you just, you know, just be a volunteer assistant and take over the sprints and hurdles? He did not tell me what to do. He just threw me in the fire, and I learned by trial and error. I uh, love Chu because if he was trying to instruct me to do something, as opposed to telling me how to do it, he would get me into conversations that made me consider what was at stake and how it had to, uh, you know, unfold and uh that's kind of how i developed my uh my coaching style just sitting down and having conversations um with Chu with Chu uh, on the vans and stuff and uh he gave me the opportunity to coach your sprints hurdles and relays and we on the women's side uh just rewrote the record books and uh you know just did very well um immediately uh and what did i do i mean i did what coach carson did with me so it's not like I, I reinvented the wheel or anything. But uh, we uh, did quite quite a good job in our conference. Uh, I think the highest we ever got was second. But uh, prior to that, I probably were last um, in the conference. But, uh, Chu, I'm Chu, sorry. Chu, I'm just going to say Chu's phenomenal. Um, his diplomatic way of doing things and just uh, getting everybody to communicate on a level-headed, uh, you know, stage. Um, never stepping on anyone's toes, um, but always getting, you know, to a resolution. Just a great guy. Love him. After those five seasons um, there in the early to mid-90s with, with Coach Chu, um, you know, so I know you spent some time at both Conley and Rose, and then you, and then you came back to ECU in, in the full-time position in 2008. So um, I'll talk a little bit about um, your time in the high school ranks and then the opportunity to come back to ECU. Well, the uh, first year of my uh, high school experience, well, actually this is what happened. Uh, Hambrick um, saw that I didn't have my degree, and I was sitting out. I had a family situation that I'd rather not talk about on the phone, uh, but uh, I, uh, Hambrick said, hey, you know, if you're not going to be in school, you can't be a volunteer assistant. So Chu said, look, either you're going to do this music thing, because I was doing music at the time. He said, you're either going to do this music thing or you're going to go back to school if you want to help me. And he said, but let me hear your music first before we make a decision. So Chu actually came over my house, listened to my demo, and he goes, uh, Don, you're pretty good at this, man. You might want to take a stab at it. So I uh, vacated uh, ECU for a little while, and, uh, you know, I, I chased my tail a little bit uh, in music. But uh, I got a little bit tired of it. Um, it wasn't really working out the way that I wanted. The lifestyle wasn't, uh, you know, what I was raised. So uh, what I ended up doing uh, upon my return, uh, I coached at Conley for a year um, under uh, Carlton Floyd and then uh, under uh, Coach Rankin and uh, uh, Dennis Gibson. They gave me an opportunity to uh, be over there, hurdlers um, at Rose, and I did that for six years uh, while I worked at DSM Pharmaceuticals. Um, I was just a volunteer assistant um, there at uh, at Rose, but uh, had quite a bit of uh, uh, just quite a bit of success there, and it kind of turned its way into an opportunity uh, at ECU, and that's that's a great story. Um, I don't want to go too far with that one because uh, it'll, it'll get kind of long. But I was literally at DSM Pharmaceuticals, looking out the back window and talking to God and saying, God, I hit my job and. Nobody knows it, and, you know, all I want to do is get off an hour early every day so I can coach kids because that's all I want to do. 
Well, uh, you know, I'm literally talking to God like I'm talking to you guys. And I said, God, you know, all I'm asking for is an hour just so I can help somebody. Like, surely you can do this. That day, uh, ECU called and said that there was an opening um, to uh, be the sprint hurdle and relay coach at ECU. I'm up here asking God for uh, a chance to get off an hour early to coach high school track, and he won up me. And uh, he uh, opened the door for uh, me to coach at uh, ECU. Uh, after three interviews with Coach Kraft, um, they hired me um, there. And here we are 12 years later, and I'm on the phone with you guys. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, I, mean, I wanted to ask you about something. And you may not really be able to tell me much of anything because he was there at ECU um, prior to you returning to ECU, but can you tell us anything about LaShawn Merritt, of course, um, record holder, uh, gold medalist in, uh, in two, 2008, and, and he ran – he his events were, were uh, very similar to yours, right, with the, with the 400 and the 4x4 yeah, four, four four maybe. Yeah, he's the gold standard. Um, he's a, a awesome. He's a gentleman. Uh, he's as hard worker as uh, has ever been here. Uh, what I do know of him is when we met him, we brought him in to uh, give the team uh, kind of a motivational speech going into the season. And I remember him pulling out his gold medals and just passing them around and letting everybody uh, hold them. And it was crazy. They were so dented up from, you know, he would just put them in his pocket. And he'd kind of, they'd be passing around. They'd be beating against each other. And, you know, gold is a soft metal, so there's dents all in them. And I'm like, LaShawn, uh, you know, these are all dented up. His answer was, yeah, that just means you got more than one. So uh, it was awesome that uh, he just, you know, he never really carried himself. Like sometimes you stars start to get a little bit, someone that you would look at as a star, um, you know, you think they get a little bit, you know, high-minded to Diddy. Uh, he just was a great guy. Um and, you know, I I think his records are six <laughs> for uh, quite a while. I don't think anybody will break them. But, um, yeah, you know, I was actually I, looking at those um, indoor the indoor records today. Uh, in the, it's faster in the, in the, than the outdoor. It's faster than the outdoor. Yeah, the 400 is 4493, yep. and, and then the, the 200 was, was 2040. <laughs> yeah, and so the outdoor record is 4523 by Brian Irvin. And the outdoor 200 meter record is 20.35, but then again, you know, it's it's outdoors. So you know, surely if Nike wouldn't have given him, you know, two or three million reasons to leave, uh, you know, he he would have slaughtered the uh, the record books. But it's a good thing that he dipped out when he did because I think Karan Clement um, turned around right afterward and broke the uh, world record for the indoor 400. So it's a good thing he got on that train when he did or else Nike probably wouldn't have offered him as much. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, certainly can't blame him for doing what he did. No, um, not at all. Not it, at all. It, as far as other athletes, um, ones that you you may have coached or uh, stories that you, you may remember, maybe it was something specific that happened in a meet or on a trip to a meet, uh, anything like that come to mind? Um, the first thing comes to mind is there's an athlete by the name of uh, Aisha Goggins. And uh, she has the school record at 5149. Uh, she was 5436 coming out of high school. We got her to 519 her freshman year, and uh, you know she uh, she got pregnant. So she kind of had a bookend career where 519 her freshman year, where she tried to quit for two years. Just coach cheek, I can't do this anymore. I've got a baby, and I said, well, you know, we're still investing in you. Uh, you know, why in the world would you want to give up on school when you really need school now? So I said, let's just keep giving everything that you got. And, you know, wherever it goes, it goes. If you don't reach, you know, where we thought you could have, it's no big deal. But let's not, you know, look a gift horse in, horse in the mouth and let's, um, you know, end this thing. So we stayed on her. She'd call my wife and Coach Cheeky, uh, Coach Cheek won't let me quit. Uh, you know, called my wife, Miss Chantel. But Miss Chantel, he won't let her let me quit. She said, "Well, baby, he's not gonna let you quit. He's never given up on anybody." So I uh, stayed by her side. Uh, I don't know how many times we would, you know, babysit and do all kinds of things to a sister. Well, she got down to fifty-one forty-nine, and uh, that just shows that it doesn't matter what's thrown your way. 
um, you do what you got to do um, to get through, and uh, you just be surprised at, at how much fortune will come your way if you just stick it out. And I tell you something that's great, and this is just – that's who we are at ECU. You, get, you find yourself in a situation like that at, at another school, I don't know that you'd find the same support. I remember Coach uh, Kraft babysitting one day so that Aisha could go to a meet and qualify. So uh, I don't know. I just I love it here. Um, I love uh, that Coach Kraft loves his staff, loves his athletes. I love that this administration wants to be uh, – they want to be, you know, the best. They're making sacrifices. Um, they're doing all that we can to establish our brand. And, uh, hey, I'm here. As long as, as long as they're paying, I'm staying. You talk about perseverance, making tough decisions, and those sorts of things. And we've talked about My Heart is Purple and Gold and what a tremendous song that is. I, I, I remember uh, several of my friends and just and people I didn't know, I, I remember talking about the song, having it as the ringtone, what have you, um, just like Kyle referenced, having it on his MySpace page back in the day. But uh, you also had another song, uh, What Kind of Pirate Are You, that, that has that uh, a little bit – of an explanation with the lyrics as far as what it, what it means to, to be a pirate. So can you tell us about that one? Well, you know, when people are just complaining uh, about uh, the coaching staff, but they're turning their back on our boys, and I just – that's just who I am, man. Like, if it's not – we don't have football because we have football coaches. We have football because we have student athletes. We have athletes. So to turn your back on a coaching staff, but then in turn end up turning your back on the people that are sacrificing, the, the sacrifice that a student athlete makes, it's just ridiculous. So for us to get upset that things aren't going the way that they should and then turn our back on uh, the people who a lot of these businesses are thriving off of, and they don't, you know, they, I'm sure they get, you know, their scholarships and the like, but what they mean to the town it was just burning my butt, so I had that thing um, sitting here looking what's going on on Facebook and all the social media and hearing people complain, and those words just came flowing. I don't that 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 song was so quick to write, uh, just because I was just really upset with um the way that they, you know, keep cheering for the boys. I don't care, but you know it just says in the song, you know, just don't leave early. Stay there for the whole – the guys aren't going to leave early, but we should stay there and fight with them. So that's kind of where that song came from. Uh, I think it goes uh, – what's it? Uh, I don't know if you're going to play it later, but uh, – Yeah, we'll, we'll, def very, we'll definitely play both of those. Yeah, it, it's very matter of fact. Those lyrics, they just hit you right between the eyes, and there's a lot of pride in there. If you listen to that song, it might not be as, uh, you know, colorful as My Heart is Purple and Gold, but – it just straight up says, you know, I'm a pirate, and I've got these boys back, and I don't care. You know, I'm, 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 a, I'm as far back as we believe, and I still believe. I'm not going to give up on, on, on anything that's purple and gold, ever. And the best things in life, I mean, whether in, in this case music lyrics or, or um, other things, I, mean, you know, I truly believe they, they come from the heart, um, just like you, you were talking about on some of I mean, the way you like to minister to your players, so to, or athletes, I should say, so to speak, uh, through your music and uh, what have you. Um, I know writing something else is very big um, in addition to just writing songs. So um, talk a little bit about um, just some of the things that you enjoy doing in your spare time in addition to, to music and writing. I know uh, you referenced your wife, Chantel. I said she was an ECU track athlete as well, and also a sprinter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, and I know you you have two two children and that are very active in the Greenville community in terms of uh, youth sports and those sorts of things. So tell us about your family. Uh, my wife and I, we met at ECU. Um, she was an athlete uh, as well when I was on my way out. And we kind of met through that relationship of uh, me just being a volunteer, driving the van around. And we didn't even like each other. Uh, we just uh, – uh, we had really good conversations that worked their way into a relationship. I remember we would go to a movie with a seat between us, then no seat between us. Then before you know it, my arm was around her. Before you know it, I'm holding her hand. But uh, it just was a really slow-brewing relationship that turned into an incredible love, a lover with all my heart. Uh, she's a cancer survivor, um, and 
she's just a fighter if there ever was one and just a wonderful mother. Uh, we have two beautiful, extremely intelligent children. Alyssa is our oldest. She's uh, 12 years old. She goes to Oakwood. My son, uh, Jonathan, uh, he's just as bright and as athletic as, as uh, I could imagine. And he goes to uh, Ridgewood. Uh, he's eight years old. Uh, he actually was supposed to have a baseball game this uh, evening, but it was uh, canceled because of field conditions from the, wa- the rain that's been coming through. But uh, we're just a typical Greenville family, man. Uh, we're, we're big on making sure that the kids are caught up on their homework, try to keep them active in the community with uh, with uh, sports and different organizations. Uh, we're really big on uh, just being a part of the vision of the church that we attend, Cornelia Christian Center Church with uh, Bishop Rosie S. O'Neill um, out there on uh, Greenville Boulevard, just down from uh, the uh, Nissan dealership. Uh, but uh, our families just, if you, if you come in our house, we're laughing and we're loud and we're sliding across the hardwood floors in our socks. And, you know, uh, sometimes we're just in each other's presence for all on our tablets, uh, watching what we want, but uh, we're always together. Um, I tell you what I love, uh, don't want to ramble too much, but I tell you now, as a coach, I travel so much, but the love is so strong in this household. My wife just really keeps things uh, going, keeps our kids engaged, uh, you know, FaceTimes me everything, uh, makes sure that I don't miss. Um, I, I miss a lot, but she still makes sure that uh, that there's that I get a hint of everything that they're doing, you know, given opportunities to pray over them before they go to bed, opportunities to pray over them before they go to their competitions, uh, sending me a video of their competitions. Uh, I, I, it's a really cool dynamic around here. And, uh, man, I just can't – it's a whole other show to talk about my wife, but I tell you, man, a, a coach has to have a good wife um, because our life is uh, a lot of what we do is, is sacrificing for other people's development, and it could be to the detriment of your own household if your household isn't fully intact. But my, mine's intact, brother, all day. My wife, Chantel Cheek, is uh, amazing. Oh, no doubt about it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a coach as well, and so I, I certainly know um, what type of woman it takes to um, to be a coach's wife, and that's for sure. Not every not everyone is cut out for it, and that's, that's uh, no doubt about that. Yeah. But um, uh, something else that I know uh, you referenced your faith. Um, that's something um, I, I know uh, you, you'll put out short video snippets and stuff, things that are just on your heart, and, th- and that's something that I, that I really I found interesting. I found helpful. Um, um, one that you had, I believe it was today or in the last couple of days, uh, just just talking about. Um, I'm trying to remember what you titled it, but it, it was. Um, it, it was. was gra- it, it I was, think that one yeah. was gratitude. I think that yeah. was gratitude. Yeah. Yeah, um, just gratitude and just how uh, being being grateful um, for for um, even the tough times because you know what it's going to mold you into. Uh, so uh, even though it was I mean, three, four, five minutes, it's um, basically a little devotional. It was, it was very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. To God be the glory. Um, it's nothing like uh, just dropping my kids off and, you know, I get a case of the gratefuls after I drop my kids off and my wife, uh, we're a one car family right now because my wife uh, totaled her car. So I dropped them off to work. And when I dropped them off, you know, um, just in those humble moment, moments, I just start talking out loud, like God sitting right there beside me. And sometimes in those exchanges, I just hear things that I feel like I need to hurry up and put on Facebook because they resonate so strong within my spirit that I feel that it might help someone else. Because sometimes no matter how hard a situation is, if you could just look at it like with gratitude that at least I'm still able to stand, at least I'm still able to fight, uh, it could have been worse. Like if we begin to just be grateful that we at least still have air in the lungs and, you know, uh, you know, some fight left in us, I think we'd stop looking at everything like the world's about to fall apart. I mean, it's not supposed to be easy. And we already know we're pirates. It don't come easy. You know, the things that we're, uh, the things that you guys are doing, very admirable to, for you to try to keep, uh, things really stirred up. And it's kind of a downtime. Well, it's back up now because Cliff rocked the house, uh, with the, with the baseball team. But I'm saying right now it's kind of a downtime. It's summer. Everybody's just, you know, you know, their expectations for next year, but you guys are working your tails off just to keep the fan base loyal and bold and strong and informed and connected. And, you know, we got we to be grateful because if it wasn't for, 
Uh, we're, we're all in this thing together, man. I think we should share some gratitude uh, for one another and share some gratitude for what we're all pursuing individually and collectively. And uh, I, I think if we'd all look at things from that standpoint, I really think we could get a whole lot further instead of just complaining that everything's not perfect. Talking a little bit more, kind of working in reverse, uh, I did want to ask you, um, we talked about Coach Carson and what he meant to the East Carolina track program. Um, just talk about the decision and what what Coach Kirk Kraft, and we look forward to having him on the show, uh, talk about the evolution. And I mean, it's just a natural to have a Bill Carson invitation with what he meant to ECU track and field. And, um, and uh, also just the development of that that track and field facility and the Olympic sports complex back under Terry Holland in the, in the, I guess, 05, 06 range, or maybe a little after that. Well, uh, coach Kraft always sees things in their entirety. Um, he just doesn't leave a stone unturned. Uh, I call him rain man because he doesn't forget anything, but, uh, everything that he looks to, he looks to it holistically. He looks at, uh, just every, he, he he never leaves a stone unturned when he's trying to establish something. You got to remember, he came from Nevada and he was already a winner. When he came here, the program was in the gutter on the women's side. I think they were the last place team in the conference. And he would say things like, uh, you know, hey, we're winning, we're winning. And, you know, to me, if you lost, I don't care if you got second, you lost. So when he kept saying we're winning, I get really frustrated. And, you know, you know, Coach Kraft, we're not winning. And, uh, he says, no, we're winning. You know, we're, we're winning in areas where you don't see it yet. Well, what he did was he established a culture of appreciation. He established a culture of, uh, just a lot of fellowship, a lot of interaction, just team camaraderie, building type things. And he would always keep us laughing and just keep a huge spirit of love. So totally different from Coach Carson's, uh, style. But what he did was that enabled him to, because, uh, you know, uh, Coach Holland wanted the program uh, to be a, a dual uh, program, men and women. It was uh, separate before. But uh, Coach Kraft just did a, a excellent job of bringing everybody together, keeping people well-informed, um, and just uh, just keeps meticulous notes of organization. And bit by bit, you just saw us, uh, before you know it, we were killing Conference USA. We've yet to uh, really sink our teeth into the American, but uh, what I can say is that the structure and the framework, it's still there. Um, we've just got to kind of get through this hump where we had a brief uh, philosophical uh, difference between, uh, I guess, what Jeff Comfer was and Coach Holland uh, was. Um, I think there was a little bit of a culture shift there. But um, uh, I don't know. I get a really good feel. Not that I, I love Jeff Comfort. He was he was uh, really respectful to me. But I get this feel of servant leadership from John Gilbert that I won't be surprised if, before you know it, it kind of has that old down-home feel again. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm probably all over the place. But what I like to say is that, um, you know, the, the uh, Bill Carson Invitational and the way that it, it, it came to unfold – it's really uh, just a small stepping stone to what Coach Kraft wants even more of. He'd like to have another home meet. He'd love to uh, be able to show uh, the product even more off to the community because that's why he does it. He literally wants the track team to, uh, you know, really, really be uh, seen out in the community and making an impact and uh, inspiring the youth. Um, he really wants everything to be interconnected. So uh, I kind of get that feel um, from John as well, uh, uh, Gilbert, that um, you know we're we're on that we're on that path. You can see it way the way Mike Houston and and uh, the way that uh, Cliff and uh, the way that Coach Dooley's athletes interact with the community. Those are flagship sports. But the funny thing is, Coach Kraft has the same vision for uh, the track team. And uh, I, I think that um, you're going to see soon, in my opinion, I'm, I'm obviously a hopeful guy, um, very positive, but I think all the sports are going to start to just be very well spoken of and uh, make uh, an impact, not just ours. Uh, look at soccer. Hamilton's got it going on. Uh, think, things about to ramp up around here, so everybody buckle in. We're, we're, we're going for a ride. 
I couldn't agree more, Udon, and uh, so I know Kyle and Dave agree um, that they had um, something that some things they had to tend to, but uh, I know I certainly speak for them as well when when we're very excited about John Gilbert and this new regime, Ryan Robinson, so on, um, right down the line. I mean, it's obvious, like you say, and that they get it, um, and he, I mean, you see him um, and not only the letters from the helm, um, just the way they communicate, um, the things they say when they communicate. And it's very yeah. apparent that they, they get what ECU is all about. And um, there's no doubt that all of our programs are headed in the right direction. I, I truly believe that because, like, like you said, with Jason Hamilton and the women's soccer program, um, mm-hmm. they – they had a very good first season with, with him at the helm, and then obviously Coach Torbett and what she's done with the volleyball program uh, that yep. was just just really in shambles when she took over from at least from a wins loss standpoint, and um, and like you say uh, with, with Coach Dooley, um, and then um, Coach Houston, Coach Godwin, I mean it, it's very apparent that um, that they really have their athletes and demand that they embrace an attention to detail and a winning mindset in every facet of their life. And, and I know that I know, I know the pirates are going to do nothing but benefit uh, from that. And uh, I can't, can't wait to see East Carolina put a competitive product on the, on the court year in year out, because we we certainly waited for it in basketball and uh, just to see us. uh, uh, And I know I'm rambling now, but Charles Coleman, um, the, the addition of that young man and some of those other recruits that coach Dooley has, Coming oh, yeah. in, coming in. I can't can't wait to early November. Whole different athlete, whole yeah. different athlete. There, there's going to be a lot more butts in the seats. It's going to be a lot more excitement. Uh, it's going to be high flying fun. Um, and then once once you get a fire, uh, once you get a fire lit under our fan base, um, you already know, man. We're about as rowdy as they come. So uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I, I can't wait. My, my children love being in that atmosphere too. So. Um, it, it gives me things to do with my family, so I can't wait. No doubt about it. Um, as I think back to my childhood, um, I certainly cannot imagine uh, my upbringing without, without going to ECU games and just uh, all the excitement that, that entailed. Um, it, was, it was certainly something that I, that I would love to go back and do all over again, but I, hopefully the Lord will bless me with several, many, several more years to um, – to attend a lot of uh, pirate events and Definitely. and uh, but we appreciate you coming on the show. You've been very generous with your time, and we certainly look forward to catching up with with uh, Coach Craft and then and you as well and down the road and talking some ECU track and field when when the the winter and spring seasons are rolling around. Yeah, we're going to be uh, really good next year. We 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 had uh, a couple of weather issues on our outdoor season this year where things didn't quite uh, get to unfold the way that we wanted to. But make no excuses about it. We'll be even more prepared next year. We've got a great roster. Um, the athletes are ready to uh, uh, compete again. I'm, com- I'm uh, communicating with quite a few of them over the summer, um, just trying to make sure that they come back, uh, you know, in shape to train, uh, or, or shall I say, uh, just not coming in ready to race, but just coming in ready to train. But um, I think that they're going to do the Pirate Nation really proud and uh, I just can't wait to go uh, back to war for this amazing university. I, I owe this university so much. They took a chance with they took a chance on me, and uh, they've uh, been you know amazing to me. Um, and I don't know. I don't want to ramble too much again, but I just love this place, and I cannot wait to go back to war for them again. Why you leaving early, pirate? You should be ashamed. I 
I'm a low pirate, never running on my team. Yeah, all day, baby, I'm a pirate like pro. Dude, so crazy, think I ain't y'all slow. Pirate in a half, no matter how you do the math. Thank God I'm a pirate, you can hallelujah that. Pirate to the bone, pirate to the core. I'm so pirate, can't be pirate anymore. Pirate doing the job, pirate doing the go. Ask a pirate, will he ever back down? No. I woke up pirate, no joke, bro, pirate. Write it down, put it in the envelope, file it, send it to the president, tell him how we represent. Second guess a pirate, probably don't know who you messing with. If you got a problem with the pirate, that's a problem. Start something with us and I bet it don't stop. Think it's just a game, well it's more than you thought. Put you in with the pirates, we're perfectly good. What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know. What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know. I wanna know. What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know. 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 What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know. 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 I'm the kind of pirate that'll call a pirate out. What you claiming pirate for if y'all ain't gon' shout? What you rock a colors for if y'all just gon' sit? That's a good for nothing pirate, might as well switch. Why you wanna spam it when the team's in the lead? Old school pirate, baby boy, we believe. And why you leaving early pirate, you should be ashamed. I'm a loyal pirate, never run it on my team. I'm that pirate that's official on the mic Charging pirates up before we get into the fight Looking for pirates who can keep the crowd hype If you're really pirates, I know what you sound like If you're a pirate, put your hooks up in the sky There's nothing like a pirate, I'm a pirate, ride or die If you're a pirate, there's a look that's in your eyes It says that I'm a pirate and I'm looking for who's not Oh, and by the way, that's a look of purple pride And that's a pirate truth, switch sides, now that's a lie Yes, I'm a pirate, so tried, so true You know I'm a pirate before I even know you More than likely you can see it in my walk You can hear it in my talk So smooth, so cool I can't explain it But I feel it in my heart Is there a pirate in the house? Check one, check two I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know What kind of pirate are you? I wanna know I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know Yo, we can tell your pirates before you step inside the gate Pirates never lie, pirates never perpetrate Pirates rock the stadium like you have never seen Pirates bleed purple before and after the game What kind of pirate are you, if not the same? What kind of pirate are you, you're not the same? All about pirates, so wild out pirates We're all out pirates, and all out pirates If you came to play games, we got y'all surrounded down with your ship in purple and gold violence Call us what you want, but you don't call us solid Now I'm proud enough to get down, baby, we out Pirates undaunted, pirates unreal Pirates under oath, one heart, one will Pirates are sold out to the cause and the cost If you're not a pirate, I'm sorry that you're lost Great interview with him uh, We could talk to him for hours He's uh, very inspirational And I love it on social media He's putting a lot of stuff like you talked about in the interview um, that's so really cool, and uh, thank you, Udon, for your time. He spent a long time with us, but uh, he's the kind of guy that uh, I know has a lot of great stories. He's a great pirate, uh, very, uh, a tremendous coach. Uh, we're going to try to get Coach Kraft on uh, as well, that track and field program, going all the way back to the days when I was there at Bubba with Bill Carson. has always been very underrated because they do very well nationally, and uh, I'm very proud of the track and field program at East Carolina. Yeah, Coach Carson that you alluded to uh, from 1967 to 2007. So you think about that uh, yeah, yeah. Tra- the track and field product that he put on the on the on the on the track and then the field events for four decades, and that and that uh, speaks for itself. Um, and as we're down through the years, we've had a lot of success in uh, several different events, but it seems like um, our sprinters, which which Udon was one of, and then also guys like Lashawn Merritt. Um, our, and I know we've had other football players down through the years, guys like Dwight Henry back in the uh, mid to late oh, 90s. That's right. yeah. um, he was a safety for the Pirates, and uh, he, he ran like a 4 3 40. And I know he was uh, part of our um, sprint relay teams. Very exciting stuff there. For uh, Thank you, uh, you, Don. Thank you for being not only a Pirate, but thank you for your dedication. Uh, Bubba and I know uh, what it's like the number of hours and that time it takes to be a coach. So 
appreciate you, sir, very, very much. And it's even more special. Uh, he told us in the before the podcast, he told us that he could have gone anywhere, uh, different places he's been offered and as a coach, but he stays home because how much he loves East Carolina. And you need more guys like you, Don, out there and, and ladies as well. But uh, I know, Bubba, uh, I want to talk, too, about um, – I want to thank you for your hard work on our YouTube channel. Um, I, I I love YouTube, and I need to get more involved in that. He, Bubba has uh, spearheaded our YouTube channel campaign, and so we want to make sure folks know, uh, Bubba, that they can subscribe. And you never know, we might have some promotions coming up. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to work on that, on getting more subscribers for YouTube, right? Yeah, that's what our YouTube su- um, subscribers have grown significantly in the last month. And um, and that's not surprising considering uh, how much more attention we've put there uh, with the amount of content we've we've uh, had on there. Um, for instance, our, our most re- recent episode of Extra Innings, our season finale uh, with Corey Glore, uh, where, where we not only talk about the Super Regional, but also the 2019 season as a whole. It's on there, already has more than uh, 300 views or listens. And then also um, we're putting our 83 roundtable on there. So some of our historical content um, that whether you listen to it now or listen to it five years from now is going to be relevant because they're talking about their ECU careers whenever those careers were. Um, guys like Ernest Biner, uh, Stefan Adams, Calvin Adams, and um, Amos Adams. Um, and those two are already already up. And then we'll also um, have our other, our other, excuse me, 83 roundtables on there. And then um, some of our um, baseball conversations that we've had with the likes of Daryl and Trevor Lawhorn, Mark Minikazi, et cetera, we'll put those on there. And then so just plan on going forward, um, the majority of our podcasts will be available on YouTube. So that's one more way you can listen, as it's obviously a very popular way to listen, um, as evidenced by Extra Innings already having more than 300 views and uh, listens. Uh, that's right, Bubba. Uh, speaking of YouTube and social media, by the way, how can folks find out more about the content for where they can go and uh, more about the show? Yeah, in addition to um, listening or watching on YouTube, you can also listen to us on the TuneIn Radio app. That's a very popular and easy way because you also have 94.3 The Game, Pirate Radio, uh, Pirate IMG, a lot of which Pirate Nation already follows. So that's an easy way. Also, SoundCloud, Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, Google Play Music, um, you name it, you can probably find us there if you, if you find podcasts on that platform. Radio.com, that's another one. Um, if you'd like to email us uh, about a potential guest or um, maybe you're interested in sponsoring the show, uh, you can reach out to us at thesportsobj at gmail.com. And then also um, follow us on Twitter at thesportsobj, on Instagram at the Sports Objective, and like and follow us on Facebook. And we've already talked about subscribing to our YouTube channel where, where our amount of content is uh, growing significantly. Oh, yeah, it really is. And, um, and I know, Bubba, we've got a lot of stuff I want to promote, too. Uh, we told people about the Sports Objective Watch Party. I think it's probably going to be about six episodes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the Sports Objective Watch Party. And so we'll be talking uh, or watching games like the 1999 Miami game and the 96 Miami game, um, different different games from different eras, maybe like the 95 Liberty Bowl. And so what it will be, uh, a lot of times uh, you may have seen something like this on ESPN or, or some of the Fox Sports South or Fox Sports stations such as Fox Sports South, but they'll watch a game and then they'll have comments from uh, players that took part in that game or coaches that took part in that game saying, okay, when this play was called, this was the thought process, this is why we called this. Um, they'll, yeah. they'll have pl- players and coaches reflecting awesome. on, on, yeah. on, the, on the action um, as it unfolded and just talking about, uh, oh, yeah, I remember that play. This is where – this is where Scott Harley rips off a 60-yard run for a touchdown or wh- whatever. So uh, it will be very interesting to hear some behind-the-scenes stories from, from the players that, that made those uh, memorable moments happen. It really is. And uh, so we have that coming up, Bubba. I want to mention, too, um, we're unveiling a whole bunch of stuff this summer, but 
Um, that's what the summertime is all about, where we have a lot of content, we have a lot of stuff going on, and it gives us uh, one great thing about the summertime, a lot of freedom uh, to do a lot of cool stuff. And um, I want to go ahead, and we mentioned uh, in our last podcast, where um, I want people to know that next year we're going to do a cruise in most likely July. Uh, we're going to do it out of uh, a Carnival Cruise Line, from Charleston to the Bahamas, our pirate cruise for 2020 is going to be awesome. Right now, I'm finalizing details with our travel agent. We'll introduce her uh, pretty soon. But I just want to tell folks: make sure if you're if you love cruises um, and if you love pirates, we're going to be working out uh, the details on all that. Uh, I know there's already been a lot of interest privately from other folks who told us that they want to co- go and and come. So. Uh, I'm really excited about that, and I'm hoping you'll be able to come. I know it's a busy time in July for you, Bubba, but I'm hoping we can make it work. Yeah, Thanks hopefully, it'll, hopefully it'll work out to where where Stacy and I will be able to attend that, um, and and obviously the kids as well potentially. Uh, but um, that, that's something that, and when you're a teacher and a coach, uh, those summer months, uh, depending on what sport you're coaching. Um, yeah. You're gonna ha- you're gonna have camps, workouts, clinics, and those sorts of things going on. So, too early at this point for me to commit, but um, hopefully it'll work out. Uh, something else I wanted to plug, Dave, is the the feature we're gonna have coming up. It will probably be a SoundCloud exclusive. Yeah, so, uh, but I'll we'll let you know for sure. But you read my mind. The SoundCloud exclusive is gonna be called Fifty Days, Fifty Pirates. So, it's beginning Friday, July twelfth, going up through. Friday, August 30th, we're going to have have a feature on a pirate, um, be it a former football player or coach. And so we'll catch up with the likes of Shane Carden and uh, several other uh, very notorious pirate players from down through the years uh, from a variety of eras, um, just, just like we've had at the Nostalgia Party and, uh, and other times on the show. So that's something to really look forward to. And um, and something to keep an eye out for here in the coming month. Yes, it is. And we also have another thing we're going to be working on that'll be big for football season, and we're finalizing that. So uh, I can't wait to announce that. But right now we're uh, working out the. It's like there's a lot of stuff uh, that we're working out the final dotting the i's and crossing the t's and signing the contract, so to speak. So, um, but I, I tell you one thing: this summer. And this fall, I can say for this podcast, it's going to be huge. And I want to thank um, Bubba. While we have a chance, I want to uh, give a heartfelt thanks to all our listeners because we've had so many listens and uh, already. In fact, our numbers right now are already. We're getting ready to surpass 2018 uh, pretty soon, right? We are. Uh, last year, our first year, um, wasn't quite a full year because we we launched right. the podcast. Uh, at the beginning of March, so we had 10 months. In those 10 months, we had um, between 20 and 21,000 listens. And right now, Dave, uh, we're right around 18,000 listens for 2019. Yeah. So, um, so we're give or take, we're right around 2,500 from sur- surpassing uh, what we did in 10 months a year ago. So, thank you so much for everyone who listens to the show or uh, potentially told others about the show. Uh, we would really appreciate it because we we know you folks are out there because we've received so many face to face compliments and um, just kind comments ab- about the show. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you put those things um, down on down on uh, Facebook or wherever you listen to the show. If you have the opportunity to write a review, please do that. It really helps us out. And then also, like we said, um, follow the show whether you're listening on SoundCloud or um, tune in so whether it's a follow a heart a like whatever that particular platform terms it or a a subscription in the case of youtube uh, we would really appreciate that and then anything you can do to um, advance the cause so to speak that's right and we have um again we'll have this uh, podcast up pretty soon and then obviously we'll have uh as things warn that we'll have more content coming up I just want to thank uh, you, Bubba, for your hard work. Kyle from LaGrange, he's not with us. Uh, he's actually working today. Like we're saying, we have more flexibility in our time. I have a day off today, and Bubba um, obviously is uh, working, but had some his lunch hour to spend time with me. I appreciate him very much. All right. Well, until next time, 
I'm Dave Richmond. You've been listening to the Sports Objective Podcast. You've been listening to the Sports Objective Podcast. Join us next time as the guys will be objective, and the objective is sports.